Good day, everybody. Welcome to Hacking Self Stories. So we are live. Well, not actually live, but we're live. We're, uh, forget it. Right. Okay. So I've had a few people reach out to me and ask me about what I look for when setting up a self storage facility. And so I've complied this self storage assessment framework. Do 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 do. Um, and the reason being is because I know that I'm going to get asked this question many, 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 many times. So I can just point them to this document or point them to this podcast. And I'm going to go through what I consider, I think it's 10. Oh, yes, it's 10. It's 10 things that I look at. Uh, <clears throat> before this, I never actually realized there was some sort of framework. I always knew that I did this, 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 and this, but I never really pieced it together. And it wasn't until somebody asked my advice, I was thinking, well, hang about. I need to know this myself as well. What is my actual framework? How do I find a, a good site? What is a good site? How do I know it's a good site? And so I'm going to go through these um, quickly now. Um, so number one is population. What is the population of the area? So is it like Beverly, for example, is 30,000 people, just over 30,000 people. However, you need to dig a little bit deeper than that. You want to know in terms of radiuses, because it's no point looking in Hull and thinking, ah, oh, yeah, over 300,000 population. That's irrelevant, because obviously, if you look at that, then on a higher level, you're thinking, oh, yeah, definitely can support us, but self-storage. But you're forgetting that at least 200,000 people of that, of that 300,000 are not going to come to your site because of the location. It is not perfect for them. So they're, not, they're going to have to drive in, you know, whatever. And so you've got to realize that it's the radius around your site. So you want to know the one mile radius, the three mile radius, and the five mile radius. I also want to know, is the population increasing or decreasing? Now, I've learned this from my American masterminds, my American friends, because they are always talking about the population of a town and city and stuff. Because um, I, f I feel like people migrate a lot more in the States because it's a big, vast country and we're a very, very small country. However, you do, uh, it's not as important over here as, as over there, how, because populations tend to just steadily increase. But you, what you want to do, you want to go on Google and you want to check it just to make sure it's not decreasing. Because have, like, for example, in Hull, Smith & Matthews, a massive, massive employer are moving out the area. So does that mean people will move out? And so you just want to, you want to just be aware of a population, what it's been doing over the last few years, what's been doing over the last 10 years, what are the trends of that of that area, just to make sure something big hasn't happened and people, I don't know, like mining or something like that, you know, the mine's closing down. So we just got to make sure that the population isn't decreasing. Um, are there any new developments? So speak to the council, have a drive around and have a look. Driving for dollars, I say this all the time. Sometimes there's no substitute. You've got to get in that damn car and do the work yourself because you can't you can't rely on what you see online. Is is there a new shopping center? Is there a new Tesco's? There's there's a site that um, I've been looking at, and obviously I'm not doing it at the minute because I'm just trying to keep my powder dry at the minute. Um, and it's opposite a massive Tesco's, a massive Tesco's. And I'm thinking, well, if it's good enough for Tesco's, fuck me, it's good enough for me. They've done all my hard work for me. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to do some some work myself. But ultimately, I know that. Tesco's have underpinned this feasibility study for me. And if it's good enough for them, it is bound to be okay for me unless I find something drastic. And so have a look. Is there any new development? Speak to the council, get to know people, get, speak to local people. Um, can you tap into any other areas nearby that don't have stair storage? So for example, Willoughby, we can tap into Cottingham because Cottingham is the biggest, it was, I don't know if it still is, it was the biggest when I was growing up. It was the biggest village in the UK. It's got a population, I don't know, I guess around about 9,000 people and it's got no self-storage. So Willoughby is right next door to there. So is there any nearby areas that you can tap into to make sure your keywords are focused on? So for example, Cottingham self-storage, hopefully we would come up number one for that area. Uh, I do think there is a Cottingham self-storage now, but it's not It's not really a self-storage. It's not SSA approved. It's, it's, it's I, don't, I don't, I think it's just somebody who's bank containers and a bit of land and hoping for the best. Um, and then number two, you've got to figure out the square foot of storage per capita. What square foot is current is the current supply? So, for example, there's some handy little tools on Google. Um, you can draw a, a, a mark around and a bit of land, a, a building on Google Maps, and this this um, this can tell you this whatever it is, this bit of software, this little bit of kit online can tell you exactly the square foot of that building. It is incredible. And then we obviously have to um, utilize it. So the utilization is normally about 75%. So 75% of a, if a building's 10,000 square foot, you know that, um, that 
7,500 is going to be lettable square footage, you know, 25 square, 25 percent of it is going to be uh, corridors, toilets, receptions, duh, 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 anything other than that. And it, it's got a mezzanine. Um, I was looking in Rochdale and I went down to, oh man, what's it called? Storefest. And I just thought that I presumed this is presumption, pre presumption kills things, kills the cat. Um, and I just presumed that they would have just one mezzanine floor. Mm -mm, turns out I was wrong. There was two mezzanine floors. So it's always worth checking out as well to make sure that, that how many mezzanine floors I do have to drive down there again and make sure. So you've got to know the current supply. So the population, um, I, I, I say, I don't know, 0 0.8. So for, for every, that's a square foot per capita. So for every, um, if it's 30,000 people, then you know it needs 24,000 square foot of of self storage. I mean, I can. I don't mind pushing that a little bit now, to be honest. So have a look around. Um, even if you've got a guesstimate for for container site, go down there. Have a look at the containers. Count the containers. Da, 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 da. Um, you can do this. It's it's a lot of legwork, but it is worthwhile because you're getting the information. Because you don't want to go to an oversupplied area. That is a fundamental mistake that people do. We don't want to do that. So number one was population. Number two is square foot of self-storage per capita. What is the current supply? We need to know that. That is vital information. And it might take you a little bit of time digging around, getting information, going down, driving down, but it's critical. It is critical in making an informed decision. Right, number three, your location. What's it like? Are you, can you be out positioned? Are you out positioned? That is crucial for me. I never ever want to be out positioned. Yes, self-storage will work on the back of industrial estate right now, but will it work in five years? Will it work in 10 years? I don't know the answer to them questions. I don't want to take the chance. I want to make sure that I outposition people. Now, I want to put it out there, but I disagree with many, many, many experts about this because they're just saying, listen, get the cheaper rent and find a location. That is absolutely fine. Um, will it work? Probably. But I know full well if I, if I pay that extra pound, two pound per square foot, because I'm leasing at the minute, then I know if I get that location, I am future-proofing myself. And also, from a saleability, I know that I'm more likely, when the time comes, to be able to sell that property, that location, for much, much higher multiples. And I'll get bigger, more interest in the location if it is on the side of a busy road uh, because of branding, et cetera, for the big boys. So for me, your location is so, so critically important. Um, and there's, I mean, there's somebody I've been helping out and they've, they've just got uh, a site that we thought was okay, but then we've actually got a professional in to have a look at the land to make sure the land is, is okay. Um, it, it's not, it's going to take around about a hundred thousand pounds to make sure that the containers to actually get it underway and get it perfect. Um, my guy that we use, he came down and had a look and the guy said, listen, I've got 50 grand to spend. And he said, no chance, absolutely no chance. And this guy knows he's schnizzle. So You've got to, got to make sure that you get the experts, have a look into it to make sure the land is okay. Don't go and make an offer before you absolutely know that the land is okay and it can be supported by containers, etc. So you've got a little bit more homework. Number four is competition. How far are they away? Number one, how far are they away? Are they close? Are they not close? If you do a Google search, exactly, you can find out exactly how many miles they are. Who is it? That's important because some people I want to take on, I don't mind taking on other people. I don't really fancy taking on because it can be too aggressive with a price and the too aggressive with offers. And um, I'd rather take somebody else on. What's their website like? Have a look at their website. What is their sales process like? Do a sales call. Can you improve on it? Most people's website, we can improve on. Most people's independence, we can we can, we can beat it. But can can you beat it? Can, can you have a look at their website? There's somebody else, I was looking at some other site the other day, and to get a quote, you couldn't get a quote on the homepage. It was absolutely ridiculous. I couldn't believe when I was when I was just doing a bit of research. Make it easy for your customers. Make it easy for the customers to get a quote. Are you making it as easy as possible for the customers, for the customer journey to get a quote on your website? And so are the competition doing it? What are they doing? So you want to look at their website. What's it like? What price per square foot are they currently getting? And so if, if, they're, only get, if they're only going for like £13 per square foot and you've you, your cash flows are saying you're going to get 16 pounds per square foot. You might need to rethink your cash flows. So what are they getting per square foot? That is vital, vital information that you need to know before you make any, any, any decision because you want to maximize what you're getting. And I'm not saying that just because your competition is only getting 13 pounds per square foot, you can't get 16, but you need to be unique. You need to be offering something different. Is it the location? Is it the, the uh, entry times? Is it, uh, are you offering a man with van? Are you offering a free van hire? 
Uh, is your self-storage better? Has it got no key technology, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to be offering more than what they're offering to get that. There needs to be something else, a unique selling point that you, your, your company is offering that they're not. Right, what else? Um, offers, do they do any offers? Is it 12 weeks? I hate that bloody 12 weeks half price. No, I don't want to be competing with people who are doing 12 weeks half price because it's a race for the bottom. Do you know what? For me, that's an easy tactic. We can all sell by discounting. Anybody can sell by discounting. Anybody can sell by offers, but can you do it without the offers and without the discounts? Uh, so are they, are, 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 what, what are they like? Are they, are they showing offers? Are they doing 12 weeks half price, eight weeks half price, four weeks half price, no offers? What are they doing there? Um, actually, I'm just going to write down Beverly. I don't know what Beverly is doing in a minute. We're just trying something new with Beverly in a minute. Uh, I'll tell you what, write it down here. Beverly offers. I can actually chase that bit up. Number five is something else I absolutely love looking at. I really, really enjoy this part of it. SEO competition. Look at uh, SEO rank, rank uh, look on SEO ranking tool that ah uh, right, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not supposed to be sharing this. <laughs> I've got a big note at the bottom here. Do not share. This is your information. Okay, I forgot about this. The, the only reason I'm doing this um, now is because I completely forgot about this document. It was it was a few weeks ago that I did, or a month ago or something, that I did this document and I completely forgot about the bottom bit. Um, so um, it says SEO competition. And I put here, look at the SEO ranking tool that we got designed by this guy called Ash. Um, it's in Google Docs. Basically, he ranked every single town in the UK for competition, how, how good the um, how good the SEO is. And so basically, if it was like, I don't know, uh, London, I could have a look and see how what the competition is like in London out of 100. So obviously, it'd be about 100. Um, and if it was Beverly, then it'd be like a two. And so with that with that ranking tool, I could I could see exactly that. I mean, there is a H stress. There's loads of SEM rush. There's loads of SEO ranking tools that you can have a look, or you can do it yourself. You can just simply put on London self storage, London storage units to rent, or whatever it may be, whatever the terminology is, and you can see who comes up. And the key here is if any aggregators are there, so aggregators are like a yellow pages, they aggregate all the self storage, put it amalgamate all the self storage into one, and um, like do it, is it square foot in, in America? Um, and they're basically trying to get you to pay for them to rank on, on their. Um, on their directory, uh, but it hasn't really happened in the UK at the minute. We've done well to keep them out. Um, but yeah, so if an aggregator is ranking, you can always beat an aggregator. You can always, always beat an aggregator. So if an aggregator is ranking, then you know the SEO is probably weak. Uh, I've got some notes here. Are companies who aren't, oh yeah, yeah, great point. Are companies in your who aren't in your town or city ranking in the top five? If so, it's a good sign i.e. Storefest has a dedicated page near other towns, i.e. Shaw or near Shaw, or, uh, and then they have a Rochdale address. So a place called Shaw or near Shaw, um, they have a dedicated website page for that, but they're not, they're actually not in that area. They're in a place called Rochdale, or I don't know if Rochdale is the correct place here, but but basically Storefest do it. Everybody does it. All the big boys do it. Um, it's like me. Um, I might be ranking for Cottingham, for example, but I'm not in Cottingham. So if you see somebody ranking for some somewhere or not, then you know you know that it's a good sign, and you can out position them, you can outrank them because you are actually in that in that town. We should be able to outrank them. Uh, that's it. Number six is PPC competition. Who is bidding on your keywords? If it's a national firm, know that you have to compete and it may be more expensive. So yeah, obviously if Big Yellow are competing against you or Armadillo, they'll have a probably a bigger budget than you, probably. Um, so you've got to be very, very careful about, about competing. Well, I wouldn't say ever don't take them on, but if you don't be scared of them, but um, just be aware of the fact that it's probably going to cost you more money to get acquire a customer through PPC, pay-per-clicks on Google. Um, if it's a no... It's it's by no means oh, sorry if it's by no means impossible, but it will cost you more if you don't. I bid against a national firm and I pay around about 120 pounds to acquire a customer. Jesus, it must have been a long time since I wrote this section. I don't pay that anymore. Well, I do actually because it's split over two sites. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Forget what I just said. The lifetime value of a customer is amazing in self storage. I currently get over 900 pound per customer, so it's a great deal. If I'm paying 120 pound, then if I get 900 quid, then per customer, then it's worthwhile, isn't it? Of course it is. It's a massive, massive multiple there. Um, number seven, website. It drives me potty when people say to me, I'm, it, it's not working or self-storage, I, I, I'm, I'm not doing very good. And I look at the website and I'm thinking, there you go. That's, that's 
fundamentally, that's what the customers see first of all. Uh, well, your SEO advertisement, and then they see your website. Uh, probably eighty percent of the time, they'll see your website before they see your actual actual premises, unless you're on a busy main road. Um, so I put here: this is your unique selling point. This is your shop window. It's an investment. It's not a cost. You have to have to invest in this. Get experts to do it for you. Um, we uh, we get Kerry to do our paper clicks, and she says that our website performs outperforms anybody else in the UK that she looks after. Why? Because we spent an absolute sodding fortune making sure that our website has the buttons in the right place, and we've, we've basically got an expert. We've got an expert. Um, uh, I don't, I don't, <laughs> if anybody wants to know, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, I don't know why I'm keeping this to myself. It's just like, I fa- the problem is it's getting more and more popular. We got 12,000 downloads last month, which is nuts. Absolutely nuts for, for us anyway. 12,000 downloads for self-storage is crazy. And so if I, uh, if I give everything away, then I've got no advantage. Um, so yeah, you really, really need to, oh, I'll, put it, I'll put it here. Um, I can introduce you to one of the world's best designers. His company designs websites for some really big entrepreneurs, such as John Lee Dumas, James Schranker, Jordan Harbinger. He doesn't cost as much as you may think, but it's an investment, not a cost. I mean, you can get a decent website, really decent website for like six grand. Six grand, I reckon, um, you'll get a website for. And it's an investment. It's not a cost. Don't have one of these Mickey Mouse websites. A website is there to perform. It's it's your salesman 24-7. So, and it's selling you nonstop. It is literally there, never, never sleeps, always on selling people nonstop. Make sure you invest in it. It's it's one of the biggest biggest advices I can give. Advices, biggest biggest pieces of advice I can give to people. Uh, your projections. Oh, this this knacks me as well at the minute. Remember, it's better underestimate than overestimate. Last thing you want to do is run out of money. And yes, I'm talking from personal experience. I put here. Um, as you, I've I've mentioned it many many times. When we first set up Willoughby, I didn't understand projections very well. I didn't understand the industry very well. Beverly, we just opened and it worked. It was a container site. It, we, we had a lot of cash because I, I sold my betting shop for £345,000 to Corals. Not loads and loads of cash, but I had enough cash. I had cash there, but it didn't matter if we didn't get loads of customers because I was sat on a nest egg there. So if we got customers, great. If we didn't, I had the money to, to pay the rent and rates and don't want very much anyway. Uh, but Willoughby was a complete different kettle of fish and... Um, and so remember, it's better to underestimate rather than overestimate. And I've, I've told you loads and loads of times that the problem that I see when looking at other people's feasibility studies is they, they overestimate how many square foot they're going to bring in. And sometimes I just cringe when I see their figures and I'm thinking, oh, my God. Um, yeah, I would certainly look at reducing that because it is going to be hard to hit them amount of figures. I, I would rather I would rather always over outperform, overperform than underperform. So for me... Um, just please, please be careful, especially with the current climate. Don't overestimate. I mean, uh, it's got to be a fucking good site to be over 500 square foot. For, for me to put over 500 square foot per month in a year. And then don't forget, the second year gets harder because you've got a chain rate. Um, in the first, first six months, you don't have much chain. So you've got to be really, really careful. Don't get me wrong. A Clough Road is doing over 1,000 square foot a month, which is fantastic. However... I never ever set up my cash flows to be anything over 500, 400 and something square foot. I, I, I actually EMAX, I think it was. So we're, we're really, really outperforming, but I would never ever be comfortable doing that and setting that as a thousand square foot. Friggin' hell, no chance. Um, so yeah, be very, very careful what you set your estimates um, for, for your fill up rate, et cetera. Uh, do three projections, worst case, best case, and what you expect to hit. What's, um, what's your return on investment going to be? Cash on cash, basically going to be, you need to know that as well. So when I say do free projections, um, I, I always, always make sure that I am okay with worst case. If it hits worst case, am I okay with cash flow? Because like I said before, um, cash flow is the heart attack of a business. Um, and being unprofitable, it'll kill you, but it'll take longer to kill you. It might be cancer, but a, it's a heart attack is cash flow. So be very, very careful. Um, and you want to know when do you get past that critical point? When are you past that critical point? When what what month is it? When you are your expenses are actually um, less than your revenue? Because what point is that? What point is your critical point? Can you last up to then? How much money are you going to spend, etc.? 
Um, so yeah, that's important. That's number, all that was number eight was your projections. Number nine is what's your USP? How will it start? How will you stand out? What will you be doing differently? You've got to stand out somewhere. You can't be just vanilla. We need to stand out, whatever it is. We're going to be doing mascots. Uh, our new sites were all over mascots. Um, we're going to have a whole city one. We're going to have a Boston one. We're going to have, um, I can't tell you where that was going to be because it, it might happen, might not happen. Um, and so, yeah, um, I want to stand out and I want to stand out by quality as well, by the website, by by position. So what what is your USP? Is it we're, we're, the, we're officially the most safest self-storage in Hull. Um, so how are you going to stand out? What will you do above and beyond for your customers? Um, one of my first talks I ever did was in Vegas about customer care and how it's so important and making sure that you become a walk, that your customers become a walking, talking billboard for your facility because it's much, much, much easier if your customers do the selling for you rather than you and then customers come to you. Um, and that is something that our team does unbelievably well. So I'm really, really proud of them for that. Um, how can, uh, this is next bit. How can you get your customers to be walking, talking billboards for your company? Do you offer a celebrity service? Like my good friend, Jeff Ram. Um, I say good friend. I've spoken to him like seven times. Yeah, he's a good friend. I don't even know if I got his name right. Is it Jeff Ram? I don't know. Anyway, celebrity service. He is brilliant. He's wonderful. What a guy. I'm waiting for his book to come out on uh, Audible. I wonder if it's out on Audible now. It wasn't out when I last checked. Uh, but if you get a chance to read that celebrity service, Jeff Ram, he is awesome. He really does know his stuff. And we've done an interview with him on this podcast as well. Um, he is absolutely fantastic about standing out. Celebrity service. Basically, celebrity service means... If Victoria Beckham, David Beckham came into your facility, you don't want to act any differently with them as you would do any other customers. So do you treat every customer like a celebrity, like Victoria Beckham? Uh, and lastly, the lease. I've wrote this one up because most people, um, when starting in self-storage, or most people who are independents are probably going to be doing the lease because we all start with leasehold, first of all, and then we try to get to the holy grail, which is freehold, but it takes money for that. So for me, my, my growth is going to be leasehold at the minute. Right, so I recommend a long lease. I recommend a long lease for two reasons. Number one, it's more saleable. So when you come to sell it, customers, look, uh, customers possible um, big companies, um, possible people who are going to take you over will look at it more favorably with a long lease. If it's a short lease, five-year lease, I was, I was um, a couple of years ago, I went to price up a self-storage facility and it had three years left, three years left on the lease. And it was, it was, uh, there was asking more than I would make in three years. And he goes, oh, don't worry, the landlord's awesome. He'll definitely, he'll definitely give me the uh, the extension. And I can't remember which way it's wrong. It's either in the act or out the act. But basically, uh, I think it was in the act. So it didn't mean, if I, it could be the wrong way around, but I think it was in the act where it didn't mean that he had to renew his lease agreement. And so you could be out on your ear. So yeah, make, and make sure it's um, outside. I think it's outside the act. So make, or oh, is it inside the act? I don't know. One of the two, anyway. One of the, one of them's inside the act or outside the act means that you can you you have the right to renew your lease, um, and the other one means that you don't have the right to renew your lease. So make sure you have the right to renew your lease. That is crucially important. Um, and so I recommend a long lease for for that reason and for for making sure that obviously then it's saleability. And obviously, if you're spending money on it as well, you don't want to spend money on a five-year lease and be kicked out because a lease to do a shop fit, it could be a million pounds. I don't know. It could be half a million quid. And so you want to make sure that you've got enough um, enough years. And the only problem with that is the downside is you have to pay stamp duty. But do you know what you're doing? You're investing in your future as well. You're ring-fencing ring fencing your uh, facility. So, um, yeah, 20-year lease, I recommend at least. I've got a 30-year lease at, at, at Willoughby, which is awesome. Um, I also recommend five-year breaks. Now, you do, critically important, you don't want five-year breaks from them for that side. You only want five-year breaks for your side. Um, you want to be paying monthly in advance. You don't want to be paying quarterly in advance. And so many people might ask you for a deposit. I'm going to put you in no deposit because I've just come up against this myself and they've tried to get me with a deposit. But if you push back, you will get away with no deposit. Um, so... Uh, so yeah, five-year breaks, only your side. You want you want to make sure that you've got breaks. So be, basically, you've got the rights. If you're paying, I don't know, 150 grand a year on rent and it's not working out, you, you don't want to be stuck for 20 years because that's a lot of money. Um, so five-year breaks, just your side and no deposit. I was happy playing the deposit at Clough Road because the guy didn't know me and he was building it for me. He spent like three quarters of a million pound building it for me. So 
I was happy paying that deposit. However, I don't want to pay deposits for, for ongoing. And since then, we've done another site uh, together and he's building the site for me. And because how well this one's gone and we've got a great relationship, then we're not doing a deposit this time as well. Uh, so I was looking at a place and they'll always ask for a deposit for the lifetime of the lease. Of course they will. If you have to pay a deposit, make sure it's limited to three years. That's what we're paying at Clough Road. So listen, it's affecting, my it's affecting my cash flow. I can't give you it for the long term of my lease. It's 20 years. I won't need it in 20 years. I need it now. And just be honest with them. Um, so you don't want to pay in a deposit. So monthly paid in advance, that's that's the rent, uh, not quarterly. It massively helps cash flow. Everybody, most landlords will try to get you on a quarterly basis. Why wouldn't they pay in advance? Because they get the money up front. It's so much better for you to do it monthly in advance rather than quarterly in advance. And you might have to do quarterly in advance for the first year, first two years. But then what you want to do is say, look, if I'm never late, da, 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 can I please go on to monthly advance? It just massively helps my cash flow. Self storage um, sucks out cash flow. So that would be really, really helpful for me. And ultimately, if your business is thriving, then it's good for them as well. So why wouldn't they? And you want to do uh, one to three. One to three percent cap and collar increases. Um, that's that seem, seems to be the best the best structure of a lease that I've come across anywhere. So hopefully um, that is helpful to people. Number one, population. Number two is square foot per capita. What is currently on supply? Number three is your location. What's it like? Number four is the competition. What are they like? Um, number five is SEO competition. Look at the SEOs. Um, look at basically the search results for stuff in your area uh, or the area you're looking at. Paper clicks is number six. Number seven, website. Massive. It's an investment. I, I, I spent 20 grand on a website. Oh, I have done. I spent more than 20 grand on my website. Um, your projections is number eight. Make sure they're good. Make sure they're achievable. Don't just project what you want to see. It's not what you want to see. It's what's actually achievable. Number nine is what's your USP and number 10 is the lease. Hopefully this is of some good, bloody hell, I've been trying for 27 minutes. Holy shit. Wow, this is a long one, right? It's, it's really hot outside. I'm sweating buckets in here. It's absolutely boiling. All right, see you later, guys. I love you, I appreciate you, and I will see you on Friday morning. Yeah, Friday morning. See you soon, bye.